Today is August 21st, 2018. This is Agent Kevin Kobach from the Colorado Bureau of Investigation placing a phone call to Nicole Kessinger, also known as Nikki, at 720-656-9605. The current time is 6.45 p.m. Hi, Nikki. It's Kevin. Hi, Kevin. How are you? I'm okay. All right. <clears throat> um, can you? I, I'm running a recorder, so you know. Um, okay. I, I just want you to introduce yourself again for the tape recorder. Just say your legal name for me, and then we'll get started. Okay. Okay. It's Nicole Lee Kessinger. And your birthday, Nicole? July 3rd, 1988. And you go by Nikki, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. All righty. So <clears throat> you texted me this morning. We had a brief conversation regarding some new information that you remembered uh, from just reflecting on what's been going on with this case. So yeah. you want to start with that? So you did you write some things down? I did. So okay. they're kind of out of order. They kind of just are as they came to my head. Sure. Um, so we'll go over them in the order that I wrote them down. That's fine. Um, so I was thinking about the whole, um, uh, what is the, the name of the, the stuff she sold for LaBelle? Um, Thrive. The, uh, I'm sorry? Thrive. Thrive, that's right. I was like, it starts with a T and I'm trying to blank. So I started thinking about this whole Thrive thing because I remember that we spoke, well, at the end of last week and you were asking what I thought of it and I made it clear that I just... I didn't understand it. Um, and the reason I had a hard time understanding it was because I didn't understand how people who were living sedentary lifestyles and had poor diets were losing so much weight on this on this program. And Chris was never able to tell me what was in it. Like he always, he not always, but when we first met, he was like, you should try this stuff, you should try this stuff. And I never, I never wanted to. I was uncomfortable with it because I didn't know what it was um and i even had looked on their website and i still didn't completely understand it and so i just kind of i stayed away from that and not only that i mean he told me you know the only things he pretty much told me is it gives you energy and it's like a weight loss supplement and i'm not trying to lose any weight like i don't need that and i didn't feel like i needed the energy either so he never pushed it again and i never i never like he always wore the thrive patches and I never questioned it. It was like what he did. Um, but one thing I do remember him mentioning to me when he first tried to introduce me to thrive was that you needed one patch a day. Um, and when he would hang out with me, he always wore two, always wore two. Okay. Um, and I don't know. Do you remember where he, doubling up on where he wore them? Yeah, so he would usually wear one on, like, his left tricep, bicep area, and then sometimes he would wear another one on the right side in the same spot, or he would wear it on his, like, lower back. Okay. Um, but he always had two, and I remember thinking, like, I thought you only needed one of these. Why are you using two? And I never, I never questioned it because for me, I mean, like I never questioned him about it because to me, I just felt like since I wasn't involved with that program and I didn't want to be involved, it wasn't really my, my position to, to, to question him. Sure. Um, and now I know that there's also supplements that go with it. There's like a pill and, and like a, morning shaker there's like a lot of stuff that goes with it but there's like a daily routine of like three or four items that you are supposed to take now was he doubling up on those other items i am not sure I was do he not follow, know that. do you know if he was following the complete routine um as far as i know he was following it and he had told me that that is why he lost a bunch of weight he said that the reason he lost so much weight was all because of Thrive. And then he said that at some point a few months ago, he had started getting stagnant with the weight loss. And so 
all that is when he decided that he was going to start working out again. And that's when he decided he wanted to start eating healthy as well because he was realizing that he'd like plateaued and he, he still wanted to continue with his fitness. But I think he was realizing like maybe a diet, like a healthy diet and exercise is what I need at this point. So that was the avenue that he was starting to go down and he'd been going down by the time I met him. Um, but he was still doing the thrive on top of it. Okay. So the thing that caught my yeah, so the thing that caught my attention about this recently when I was thinking about it is the fact that um I think maybe the reason he was doing the two a days and this is just speculation is because it had like plateaued. So maybe he was doubling up because he thought it had plateaued. So the reason that this comes to my attention is because of his weight loss. So um, he lost 13 pounds in about five weeks. In fact, I can give you the dates. He lost 13 pounds from July 4th to August 11th is how much weight he lost. Because August 4th, I mean, July 4th was the day that I went to his house and sat down with him and asked him, how much do you weigh? And he asked me, can you just like look at my macros and see how much protein people my size would usually eat and all that and just asked me to like glance at it. So that's why I went over there. So that's kind of like, oh. when you say his house, is that's his house in Frederick that he uh, shared yeah. with Shannon? Yes, that's okay. the one that I told you guys I right. went to on the 4th. And that was why I went there was to, to sit down with him that morning of the 4th and just discuss his goals, you know, and again, I'm not a fitness trainer, so he already had a, his, an idea in mind. He was just asking me, like, can you just glance at this and tell me what you think since you pay such close right. attention to these things. So anyways, um, so uh, I'm going to ask you, I think I already asked you and we discussed this once, but July 4th was the first time you went to his house. And then I think you yeah. said like the following Monday or Sunday was the the, fin the second and final time you'd been to his home? Um, I will have to, it was a Saturday and I'll have to look it up. It was either the Saturday, it was, hold on, let me pull out a calendar. I really just want to like, uh, that's July. So the fourth and then that we can be, I think, I think, and I will double check this, but I'm pretty sure I know for a fact I was at his house on July 4th, mm -hmm. and I think the second time I went to his house was Saturday the 14th. Okay, and and you, those are, if I remember right, you only had been there two times, right? Yeah, like I didn't want to go back. After that second time that I was there, it was like, I don't want to be at this house. Like, if you want to hang out, come to my house. So, so yeah, so the 14th was the last time I was there. Okay, um, But back to this, so the, the Thrive thing. So... I, I was, I was like, kind of concerned that he was losing so much weight, um, but I also wasn't because he was like kind of fine tuning his diet. But it was enough for me to look at it um, because I was like, well, I mean, it it wasn't like a, a, a severe weight loss, but it was it was kind of fast. So I was like, okay, well, are you getting enough calories? What's going on? And I couldn't figure it out because I was looking at what he was eating, and it was like healthy proteins and vegetables and, and he was eating a decent amount of food and I'm just like how is this man losing so much weight and then I started thinking about it the other day and I'm like oh my god it's because he was like doubling up on all the Thrive stuff and he was starting to eat really healthy so that I think is so did you see a change stuff. in him personally during that time from July 4th, or pardon me, July, yeah, July 4th to August 11th when he lost that kind of weight? What did you say? What was the question you did, asked? Did you, did you see a lot of change in him? Like, uh, not physical change, but was his personality different or was it just the weight loss? No, it was just the weight loss. Like, okay. I didn't think he was any different, but this is the one thing that I wanted to point out to you guys was that... He was always this way. I just want to state that right now. Like, this was not something that started at any certain point. But from the first time that we started hanging out, he always had a ridiculous amount of energy. And it wasn't that he was, like, super high strong and bouncing off the walls. It was that he could stay up. He, like, didn't need to sleep. 
and he was always that way. Like when we would hang out, he, oh my God, I would try to get him to go to bed at like 10 o'clock every night. I'm like, if you're going to stay here, you need to go to bed at like 10 because I have to get up and go to work in the morning. And so do you. And he, he would keep me up like every night. And we usually, I would say, I mean, it kind of fluctuated, but typically I would say that we went to bed somewhere when he stayed the night at my house on those nights, somewhere between 11 o'clock and midnight every night. And it used to bug me because it was like, I was so tired. I'm what time like, did you wake? Go to bed. What, time, what time did you usually wake up? Um, it kind of depended on the day and what I had going on at work, but I would say in between 4.30 and 5 is like a pretty accurate assumption of when I'm supposed to get up for work. Okay. All right. So, I mean, and then so what I would do is I would go to work all day, and then when I would get off of work, I would sleep. I would go home and nap, and I would, and my naps varied in time. Sometimes it was a half an hour, sometimes it was like an hour and a half. It was like whatever my body needed, and then I would get up, and I would go to the gym, and then after I got back from the gym, he would come over my house, and it would be the same thing where it was like he would keep me up, and I will tell you, without those naps, there's no way I would have been able to keep up with him. No okay. way. And and then and another thing about that too, and he was always like that, always. And and it used to he I could tell like his body wanted to sleep, but like his mind couldn't sleep. And the reason that I say that is because he I, he sometimes I would see him like he would keep me up so I'd be like all right well like let's watch a movie you know uh, if you want to hang out and so we'd be up and I'd see him like doze off and then like wake right back up and like doze off and wake right back up okay. and there was a few times there was a few times that we were having a conversation and he would be talking to me ah, Kevin he would like fall asleep mid-sentence and okay. wake up like snap <laughs> Yeah, and he would, like, snap out of it, like, five or ten seconds later and keep talking right where he left off. That's weird. <laughs> yeah, it always, like, blew my mind. I was like, this guy must really like me if he is, like, avoiding sleep to be with me. <laughs> and it was like, I just, I couldn't do it. Like, I napped probably almost every single day right. after I hung out with him. Right. Okay. So I get so just, I get honestly it was almost it so was like he was on speed. So you think the Thrive thing contributed to that or at least his own drive for losing weight and getting in shape and maybe his um attraction to you um drove him because you're pretty physically fit and he was kind of motivated by that. I think I remember you saying that earlier um that you were trying to help him get in better shape. He was already in good physical shape and he was already taking care of his health and his diet in the gym. I just think he was like, hey, since you're already in this like, live a healthy lifestyle, uh, would you be willing to just give me some input? Maybe okay. I can fine tune it. You but know, do you I think that was some of the motivation for him to uh, stay awake uh, long hours and, um, you know, use maybe multiple patches of Thrive? to try to impress you for lack of better terms no i think it was the thrive and i think his body wanted to sleep i think it really wanted to sleep i think he legitimately was trying to lose weight and i think that's what was keeping okay. him up cool because at the end of the day like i wanted to sleep but he just was like really restless and didn't seem like he wanted to but he always seemed like really respectful of my wishes so you would think that he would be on board with that, but it was almost like he, like, couldn't calm his brain, you know? And mm -hmm. like I said, he wasn't acting high energy. He just, like, wouldn't sleep. And I almost think that's what it was. It was almost restless where it's like, hey, I can't turn off at the end of the night. Stay up with me. And he never said that, but that was kind of the impression that I got. Okay. And so, and again, the double thrive patches, I mean, maybe, but I don't really think he was trying to impress me. I mean, he told me, like, I plateaued on this stuff. So I think maybe he was like, well, what if I double dip? Mm -hmm. So Right, so he's trying I'm to do it over. Sure. I get it. Okay. Yeah, so I don't, I don't think that was a, a needy motivated thing for him. I think that was, he, because he was already working on the thrive thing. And like I said, in his fitness, he was doing all that prior to me being in his life. Okay. So, and, 
and so, and I don't know if he was double patching before I met him. He double patched the whole time I knew him. So I don't know if like that occurred once I came into his life or if he had already started doing that once he plateaued. I never yeah. asked. Okay. All I right. just found that really interesting. So yeah. I just wanted to bring that yeah, up. Yeah, and I appreciate it. And you're, that's the kind of things that I want, uh, when we talked prior, uh, just to re- get you to recall things that didn't seem out of place then, that, but when you reflect back, may have seemed out of place now with what you know. So, what's I, next? I mean, it was scary to me. Like, it was scary that he lost that much weight on that stuff, but I guess a lot of people do, and I keep thinking about yeah, it. I'm mean, like, it almost seems like it's a drug. If you look at any diet, though, I mean... I, I'm not a fitness guy, but if you read about Atkins or any of these other diets, people lose excessive amounts of weights in short periods of time. So, um, yeah. yeah, but whatever. I, I think it's interesting that uh, this Thrive played a part in it. Um, and quite frankly, I, I am going to get one of these patches uh, to try to figure out what it is. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll figure that out um, at some point. So, okay. what's next on your list? Um, let's see. Let's see, let's see. Um, oh, okay. So, this is Saturday. So, this Saturday would have been... This is Saturday, the 11th of August. Okay. Was that the 11th? Yep. Okay. This is the night that we attempted to go to the Lazy Dog on 120th and Federal, and we walked in, and... I looked at their menu, they like tried to feed us, and I looked at their menu, and I was like, I'm not eating here. Right. Um, and because, yeah, so we went to the other Lazy Dog, which is actually owned by somebody else, so they have a different menu. So we went to the Lazy Dog off of, I think it's 144 that I told you guys, and we sat down and we ate. And we it's, were it's on Highway 7, dog. right? What's up? Is it on Highway 7? Mm, I don't think so. It's on I-25 and like 144. Okay. I mean, I can look it up. And no, like that's okay. Screenshot it. I think uh, um, there's two of them, and I think there was some confusion. One of our guys went, and I just want to make sure he went to the right one. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't know the lazy dog, but I'll ask him tomorrow. 144th is right me. by Highway Seven. Okay. Well, I, I don't know that. I don't know. Yeah. I, just, I had never been to that one, so. Um, I think it's 144th. It might be 136th. I will look it up tonight and I okay. will screenshot you the address and I will send it so that you guys, if you guys need to pull those videos, you can okay. find it. Um, but one thing that I noticed about this is that, um, so normally when we went out, um, I try to keep things pretty cheap just to be like respectful. Like I never went to like expensive places or anything. And sometimes I would pay for things. Sometimes he would, but when he paid, he would always use these like Anna Darko gift cards, um, like these little gray gift cards. And they were always like $25 or $50. And they always came in like, like denominational increments that made sense. And he told me that he got these from Anna Darko as rewards for like doing really good stuff at work. And is that true? I don't know. I don't know if, I mean, I know that him and his wife had a lot of financial issues, so I don't know if maybe he's the one who actually wanted to spend all the money and maybe he was cashing his paycheck in via gift cards so that his wife couldn't track it. I don't know. <laughs> okay. I don't know. But I think it's something you guys will need so to confirm with. So were Anna they Darko. actually in the name of Anna Darko? Did- do you remember, or did he just tell you they, that they, they were different? No, 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 no. I've seen them. They okay. see Anna Darko on them. They're like little sil- dark silver, like credit cards, but they're like gift cards. So um, you're you're just suspicious that potentially he was hiding money from his wife with these gift cards. Honestly, no. I think Anna Darko legitimately gave him these. The oil industry is pretty good about when our operators do things that are safe. Um or they do a really good job at something. Um, they they uh, they usually provide like gift cards or some sort of incentive for it. Just so they bonus these guys out if they're doing a good job or being extra like they have no safety violations and stuff. Yeah, 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 stuff like that. So it's like they're like safety rewards. So, okay. Um, yeah. So so do I think they were legitimate? Honestly, yes. I, I, I do. That's something you need to confirm with Anna Darko, though, because I wasn't 
one of their employees, so I don't know. Okay. Um, but I did think to myself, like, if they do have money issues, maybe he was possibly concealing it. But the thing, it's not even the gift cards, I think, that are, like, the main focus on this right now. For me, the main focus that I wanted to bring to you guys' attention is he always paid with those. Always. And Every then, time you oh, guys... So, night, you, you, we talked about this... Um, prior and let's just revisit it um you guys never really went out on a date per se with the exception of this saturday night on the 11th usually you guys spent time at your home um versus going out unless i'm mistaken on what you're saying you are i okay so we on most nights would hang out at my house, but we went out a few times. I had dates for everything, and okay. I can give you that once yeah. I'm done with this. Um, so um, the reason that this caught my attention was not because of the gift cards. It was the lack of the gift cards. So when we went out to dinner, he went to pay the check, and I noticed that instead of using one of the Anadarko gift cards, he had a baby blue credit card in his hand that he used to pay. Okay. And I just remember thinking to myself, like, why isn't he using any of those gift cards? I'm pretty sure he still has a balance on one of those, but I couldn't remember. And then I was just like, I was like, maybe, because, you know, at this point, at this point, he had made it clear to me that they were, like, filing for divorce. Like, it was, like, done. So I was like, well, maybe... He just doesn't really care anymore, you know? And But then another part of me was like, but technically, they're still together, so why would he do that? And, like, I just, I didn't ask, because, like, at, he had made it sound like by that Saturday that they were so far removed from each other that I was like, it's plausible that now he's just not, like, has nothing to cover up, you know? But then at the same time, I still feel like, until your divorce is 100% completely final and you're out of that house, why would you do that? Sure. I mean, so again, I didn't So you just found it was a little bit suspicious um, that he used a credit card versus the, um, the gift card. It was like he had nothing to hide. Right. Or nothing to lose. He, he was just like, yeah, I'm going to pay with this right. and I don't care. Okay. So, and that would certainly be... Uh, if it was a credit card, uh, just thinking uh, would be something that maybe his wife would see at some point and he would have yeah. to then try to have to explain that. So in your mind, he's like, oh, well, we're divorced or I don't care anymore. Um, she's going to find out that I have a, uh, a girlfriend. I don't really know what he was thinking. I mean, I can't think for that man. I mean, I, I don't even, I can't even process half the shit he's done or the lies he's told at this point, so I don't know. I just think that that was extremely peculiar because he had never done that before, okay. and it didn't seem like a big deal to him. All right. I, I get what, where you're going. Um, so it kind of made you think that he didn't have anything to hide anymore. No, not at all. And again, you know, I mean, there was other parts of our relationship where it's like he talked to me on the phone pretty freely, like all the time, you know. So for me, like he never really seen it never really seemed like on the phone, like he had to hide anything at all. And that's why, you know, when he's telling me, yeah, we're getting separated. Yeah, I'm sleeping in the basement. Like it didn't even like occur to me, like maybe this isn't happening because it was like he was so liberal about his communication with me even if they were in the same house together at the same time and so for me I was like all right well maybe she's upstairs he's downstairs they're separated it doesn't really matter if he makes a phone call and so that he was always liberal with but when it came to like paying for things it was always the Anadarko gift cards and mm -hmm. again like I don't know if that's because he was hiding it from her or if that was because he happened to have these gift cards and why not spend those as opposed to like the money in your bank account i mean i don't know i just noticed that that one last time that we hung out that he paid with a credit card and i was confused because i was pretty sure that he still had a balance remaining on like one of those anadarko cards but i i okay i don't know Got it. i don't know all right what's so, next all right and then um, well, let me just give you eight real quick. Sure. Um, 
for the things when we were out in public. So I think I have these right. I hope I have these right. Um, but on Sunday, I think it was Sunday. I think it was Sunday the 5th, I think. July 5th? Um, yeah, that's what I meant. I'm sorry. I'm glad that you're paying attention to this. <laughs> yeah. So July, I think July, I'm going to start at the beginning. Okay. So I went out of town for my birthday. I came home on July 3rd, which is the night of my birthday. On the 4th of July, I went over to his house in the morning and then and helped him with his like meal plan thing. And then after that, I went to the 4th of July Rockies game with one of my friends. And then on the 5th, I think it was the 5th, I don't remember, um, we went to go see a movie. Um, and we went to the movie theater that is up by that lazy dog, I think on 144th and I-25. Um, what movie did you see? see? That new Jurassic Park movie. I don't know what it's called. Okay. And I remember um, we got there and the first showing was sold out, I think. I don't remember. I think either we were going to go see another movie and it was sold out or that one was sold out. So but when we went up there to start with, it was sold out. And so we, we left and we... Um, we went and like walked down to the benches that were like right across from the Victoria's Secret. Um, and I don't know what corner of the building that would be on. Um, if you guys need me to go up there and try to figure it out. No, I can we'll, I'll figure it out. That's um, okay. Yeah. And we like sat in these benches on this bench under this tree and like just bullshit it until the next showing of the movie. Um, and then we went to the second showing of the movie, and it was really late. I want to say it was like nine something p.m. On, yeah, it on was late. The and I want to say I don't. I I just I just don't even want to say it's Sunday because I feel like it was like not Sunday. I don't think it was my birthday though. I don't know. Okay. I don't know. I might have all my dates mixed up. If I have all my dates mixed up, just that's okay. You that you get, you're getting us close. You, you'll <laughs> find it. Okay. So then. Um, let me go back to, um, no, I was looking at August. That's why the date, the date sounded weird. It was, it was like, it was either the 6th of July or the 7th of July. Okay. I was looking at the wrong one. So Sunday the 6th? Pardon me. No, it's, it's, it, I think, because that's what I'm saying, I didn't think it was a Sunday. So it is either Friday the 6th okay. or Saturday the 7th of uh, July. I'm sorry. I was that's okay. the wrong calendar. Um, so one of the, well, because I remember that was like our first, like, outing. That was like our first date, and it was the weekend right after my birthday week. Okay. So, um, so it had to been, yeah, either probably the 6th or the 7th. And okay. then... We didn't go anywhere again until the next weekend. And that weekend, on Saturday the 14th, that's the day that I went to his house, um, we went up to Boulder and we went to the Shelby Mustang Museum. So this was July 14th. Okay. Yeah, so we went up there, took a tour, and then um, after that, we left. And um, do you remember what we time that would have been? That we left. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Well, it what time do you think you got to the museum? Oh God, I don't even remember. Um, morning, afternoon, night. I think it was pretty, like, decent time in the morning. I bet you we got there at, like, 11 or so. Because I remember it took us probably, like, an hour, an hour and a half to walk through it. I think it was it's a small museum. And then after that, we were going to go to lunch in Boulder. And then we decided not to. And then um, we just went to, we went to his house, and I dropped him off. Because I had picked him up to go to the museum. So, so I dropped him off at. You're driving what? your forerunner? Yeah, 
we we drill my forerunner all the time. I told you it was only in his vehicle one time, and I right. think it was like so he could go get gas or something. Like everything, all of these adventures were all done in my truck. Okay. Uh, um. So then uh, we went to his house, and um, we were over there for a little while. But then I was just like, I don't really want to be here. So I left, and I left him there. He didn't go with me. At his home. Um. Yeah, like I left him there. Okay. Um, and I left by myself. And then um, the weekend of the 21st, and this is how you'll know if my dates are lined up, I would base it off of this date and work your way backwards. But like um, this weekend, I went to Bandemir Speedway with him, and I went and saw... I think it was called the Mopar Mile High National. Mm -hmm. It might have been called Thunder on the Mountain. I don't know. It was the drag races, though. And it was some, yeah, Saturday the 21st. Okay. And we were there, like, the majority of the day. I think, I think we got there, like, early afternoon, and we were there till it ended, pretty much. Was that uh, late in the evening? Yeah, those things go pretty late. Like, it gets dark. <clears throat> okay. So, you guys, so you drove, did you pick him up again and then drive your truck, or, or your forerunner, right? It's a forerunner? Drive your forerunner? I didn't pick him up. No, I didn't, I didn't pick him up again because I never went back to his house. Like, he came to my house and then we carpooled. Okay. So, he drove to your house, you guys carpooled down to the Mile High Nationals and you stay the majority of the day. Is there anybody with yep. you guys on any of these dates, or is it just you two? It's just us. Okay. <clears throat> did you uh, um, have meals anywhere after you left there? Did you stop at any bars or anything? God, um, okay, so that day, I'm glad you brought that up. Um, prior to going to uh, Bandemir, we went to, um, what is the name of that little town? Not Evergreen. It's like in between Lakewood and Morrison. Morrison. We went to okay. Morrison, and there is a patio bar there. Um, I do not know what it is called. It's on top of an Italian pizza place. I think it's literally called like the Morrison Grill or Morrison Patio Bar, like something real simple. Um, and we went. It's it's just like a rooftop bar. Um, and you went and before the the drag races. Yeah, we went before the drag races. Okay. And we hung out, yeah, and we hung out there probably for a while. I think we were there for a little while. We ate there, so that's where we got So you, I totally you ate lunch there? Yeah, we did. Okay. Tacos. Okay. Uh, um, this is a really good bar, by the way. Um, <laughs> yeah, so we, 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 um, we did that, and then we went to Banamir, and then... I don't know what we did after Bandamir. I think we just went to the house. I'm almost positive. Like, I don't think we did anything after that because it was pretty late. Okay. And then on the weekend of July 28th through the 29th, um, we went to the sand dunes. We went to the great sand dunes national park. Down in uh, Alamosa? Yes. July 28th, 29th. Did you guys stay anywhere? What did you say? I'm sorry. Where, did, where did you say? Oh, we camped. Okay. We camped. I don't remember the name of the campsite, but if you, like, just let me go through probably, like, my old phone navel or, like, go through just the internet and try to look up campsites, I can probably come up with the name for you. Well, let me ask you this. There was um, some attachments that uh, when I was looking at some of your phone stuff today, although very limited, there's a, a man with a backpack. Um, he's got a beard. He, he does not look like Chris to me in, in your photos. Do you know who I'm talking about? Yeah, is he like a little heavier set? Yeah, I'd say he's a little bit bigger. Yes, that is my friend Jim. That is the one that I was with on the... Um, Monday and Tuesday last week. Okay. So there is some photographs. You mentioned the museum, the car museum. 
I think I remember seeing a couple photos of, of cars and it didn't strike me as anything then. Um, so there may be a little bit more on your phone than what I think. Uh, but there is definitely no photos of Chris. And I don't remember seeing um, any pictures of the sand dunes. But So did you camp inside the national park there? No, it was outside. I think we camped at Zapata Falls. I think that's the name of the campsite. Yep, I think Zapata, it's Falls. Zapata Falls. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's Zapata. before you come to the, you, you turn off 160 and you're going towards the sand dunes and then you turn off and kind of go up a four-wheel drive road to Zapata Falls. Uh, yeah, that was like really gnarly one with all the switchbacks yep. and the rocks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. there. And so we, we camped there. Um, was it like an established campground or was it just dry camping? No, it was an established campground. There's a campground up there. Like you hang that left to go to the Powder Falls Trail and then you go right and there's like a big campground boat. Okay. <clears throat> so that's where you guys were there. <clears throat> yep. All right. Keep going. <laughs> and then um, we went to the sand dunes. Not the first day. So we got there. Uh, fairly late on, how did I do that? How did we get, no, 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 that's right. So I just, I need to think about this. I really need to think about this. But Saturday, we got there, we set up camp. And then after we set up camp, we went to the national park. So you actually, you went and hiked the, whatever, the, the sand dunes? Yeah, yeah, we tried and I just remember it was super windy. Oh my God, the sand hurt so bad. I was, and then it was, started raining um and we stayed we stayed even though the weather was bad because there was like nobody up there um and so we did that for most of the afternoon and then um we came back to the campsite and i showed him how to light a fire because he'd never done it before um, he'd never lit a fire lit a no, he's never been camping before. He told me he'd never been camping before. And I was oh. like, well, if you want to go, I'm trying to go to San Diego. So that's why we went, because he said he'd never done it. Okay. Um, so we, Did you guys visit any... Um, there's not really very much stuff around there. Uh, there's no restaurants or anything in that area? No. So, no, we did stop at the... I think it's called like the Oasis or something. Um... It's like this little, it's like on the way to the dunes. It's not in the park, but it's like on that road that you take to get to the dunes. And it's like, it's almost like a little gas station. And we stopped there and we rented a sandboard um, to go sandboarding on. And um, we got, I think we got more ice for the cooler, I think. And we got firewood. For so it's like a gas station? Kind of, but it's like the one-stop shop that everybody goes to because there's like nothing else around there. Right. Like you and I'm almost sure, I'm almost positive it's called the Oasis, and they actually have their own campground back there too. Okay, it's like I know where you. That road. Mm -hmm. It's right before you get to yeah. the entrance to the the park. Yep, 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 yep. Okay. On the right hand side when you're driving in. Um, I'm glad that you know what I'm talking about. Well, I worked uh, um, I worked in Southern Colorado for the last five years, and I spent a lot of time around Alamosa and in the San Luis Valley, oh, so I know gotcha. I know a lot of about that area, unfortunately. Um, okay, so I know what you're talking about. So, good. That helps me. So you, you got ice so, um, and uh, firewood? Yeah, and I, I'm not sure if we got ice. I think we did, just because I like to re-up on ice who, every who time. Who paid I for shooting. it? He did. Okay, did you think he used what? the debit or the um, gift card again? Probably, because that was the plan in the first place. He was just like, well, hey, I've got these gift cards. If you want to use them, you don't even have to spend any money, and we can just use these. And I was like, well, that's great. So I remember for the trip, I filled up my gas tank, and I paid for gas, and I bought a little bit of groceries uh, for the cooler. And then um, he took care of, like, the campsite and the board and the firewood and all of that. Okay. Like, I didn't actually go into that Oasis place, I don't think. I'm almost positive I didn't go in there. He did. I, I got in line for the board. I remember that. But their, their, like, little board rental shop is, like, outside of the building. Okay. So he went inside because he went and got firewood. Um, and then we went, we went to the and dunes. I'm just looking at your dates so you know you're right. The Bandamere Speedway, the Mile High Nationals, was July 21st. 
Yeah, so, that's what I was going to say. Yep. Get online and see if that matches. Yep. It does. Okay, so, so, that, so we're then good. all those other dates... All those other dates should be good. The only one that I'm not 100 percent sure about is the movie. It was that weekend. That okay. movie, um, the sixth and the seventh. It was that weekend. I just don't remember what day okay. of the weekend. I think I don't think it was a Sunday though. I really think it was a Friday or a Saturday. Like I'm almost positive I didn't have to work in the morning. All right. So what's after um, uh, the Great Sand Dunes? Okay, so we went to the da- the dunes and then um, we went and returned the board. And then we went back to the campsite, and we lit a fire, and we ate, and we just hung out by the fire for a few hours and just visited, and then it started raining really hard. So we put everything in the tent and put out the fire, and we went in the tent, and I remember he was, like, wide awake, and I was so tired, like, Oh my god! I wanted to sleep so bad, and he just like would not sleep, and it was kind of bugging me. Like I would, I think I would, I would like almost like wake up and like half subconsciously like have a conversation with him for a sec, and then like doze back off. And I just remember being so tired, and he was up probably for a while. Okay. And and then so you guys come back to the Denver metro area on Sunday. Kind of. Yeah, but we, so we went, um, one of my friends wanted us to go to the Renaissance Festival, and she didn't know who I was with, but she was just like, at the Renaissance Festival in Colorado Springs, and she was like, oh, you should stop by, and I made up an excuse to not go over there. I just told her, I was like, yeah, I don't really know, you know, and I, like, kind of got out of it because I didn't want her to meet him. I got it. What friend um, was that? Charlotte. Okay. So did Charlotte ever meet Chris? No, none of my friends ever met him. Okay. And then um, uh, on the way back up, we stopped in Colorado Springs to eat. And we stopped at a restaurant called BJ's. On Nevada and I-25? Uh, honestly, I don't know. I mean, I just remember... Right by the Col- University of Colorado, there's a bunch of buildings. Uh, and it's a big strip uh, center. There's like a Costco. Oh, wait. I think I remember the Costco. I think I remember Costco because don't you kind of have to like, you, like from the highway, you can like see, yep. not the highway, but that main road, you can like see the Costco and then you have to kind of like turn in and around into yep. that shopping center. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the one. Okay. BJ's, it's more like a um, brew house, I guess, kind of. Yes, yes, and it's like really nice, that place. It's just like, it's like a nice restaurant. I mean, not like nice, but it's just like, it's, it, yeah, it's, okay. it's a decent place. So that I mean, would have been... It's a big place, that's what I was looking yeah. for, it's a big restaurant. Sunday, yeah. July so, 29th? That, what, uh, what, what, what... Would, would, would that have, have been Sunday, Sunday July 29th? Yeah, it was Sunday, July 29th, and if you walk in the restaurant, so picture walking in, um, and the front doors are behind you, we were sat to the right on the, like, first level, like, there's, there's, like, a few different levels, so we were sat on the right side, and then in the right side, we were on the, like, left portion of the section on the right side. Like, there's these little, like, single-seater booths. They're okay. really small. Okay. So almost, like, in the center of the restaurant, almost, but just, like, kind of on the right section of the, the main floor. Okay. Okay. So did you pay, that, did he again and, pay with a gift card at that time? Yes. Okay. Yep. All right. And then we went home. Okay. Did you see him the following weekend? Uh, no, because he was out of town. Okay. Do you know where he went? He, yeah, he went to North Carolina. Do you remember the dates? Uh, no, I think, I think, uh, I want to say that he left on the 31st of July. I'm almost positive because we hung out the weekend prior at the sand dunes and then he went to work on Monday the 30th. I remember that. And then 
I think he left on Tuesday, the 31st of July, I think. And I don't remember when he got home. <clears throat> okay. Next time you guys go out? Uh, it was that Saturday. Saturday. Uh, the 11th. And you guys. And that was. The lazy Yeah, night. the story. Yeah. Okay. So we got that all down. What's next on your list? Um, sorry, I was not, I forgot about all that stuff. And then <laughs> I didn't That's all right. So we ran through something that I, I'm, you know, the first time we talked, you were really tired. The second time you were overly stressed and you had thought of some very important stuff that you wanted to talk about. So it's fine. And it, I don't mind talking to you as many times as I have to talk to you to get everything down that could attend, you know, at some point be very important. It's fine. Understood. So just Understood. don't don't worry about that. I, you know, my job is to talk to you and make sure that this stuff is, um, you know, placed in in a a report so it, it's there forever. So it's it's fine. Again, I I just keep telling you every time you, you when you remember things, just call me and and we'll get it down. All right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And I hope you guys pull cameras and all that because like I'm trying to help you. I'm like I'm really honestly disappointed that you guys don't have all my text messages or don't think that you do like it makes me sad like I really I want you guys to have them like you need them and it's it's frustrating to me but it's like I'll just tell you everyone now and we'll go from there That's right. um hold on uh hold on what else oh okay so now let's go to this last week Okay. Um, uh, let's see. Okay. Um, so, Monday. I think probably the most important conversation that I've had, I had with him after all of that took place was that first phone conversation on Monday night. Like, the later one. Remember I told you you were telling me there's two big ones? Right. And the first one was the one where he mentioned the sheets, the smelly sheets with his kids. And that was also the one where he was telling me he was going to go get his wife's wedding ring appraised. Um, that same conversation, he, I don't remember exactly how he phrased this. I, like, I don't remember like what led to this, but he told me um, something about, like, he mentioned that he had told, I don't know what he said. He said something about the separation and how, like, she was okay with, with the fact that he wanted a separation or that, um, something like that. And I remember thinking to myself, like, wait a minute, um, what? Oh God, I don't, I'm like drawing a blank. It, here's the deal is like, he had been telling me the whole time that I was like spending time with him, that he was getting separated, getting separated. And he kept saying that he was the one who initially initiated the separation and then that it was more of a mutual thing. Like he said that he was the one who had initially brought it up okay. uh, like before we had met. And then, like, she was on board with it, where she was just like, I'm not happy either. Let's do this. Um, and then I, um, I remember telling you guys that when he was going to go to North Carolina, I kind of, like, backed away from the situation. And I was like, hey, I think you should try to fix things with her because you have a really beautiful life with her. And I think you should try to fix stuff. And he kept telling me, like, you know, I don't want to. I don't think she wants to. And I was just like please try, like, just please try. Like, I just thought he had such a beautiful life and, and, you know, and I was willing to just leave, like, leave his life. I was like, if you work things out with your wife, I'm gone. And, like, I, and, and that's fine, you know? And, and he'd always be like, well, what about us? And I'd be like, don't worry about us. Like, try to fix stuff with her. And he said, okay, I will. And then when he went to North Carolina, he told me that he sat down and had a conversation with her and that he told her 
that he wanted to fix it. That is what he said to me. He told her that he wanted to fix it, and she said no, that she still wanted the separation, and that she was ready to file for divorce. So I was under the impression when he got home from North Carolina that the divorce was filed. That was what I was under the impression. And so then on Monday, when we were on that one phone call where he was just saying all sorts of weird stuff, he like, again, like, I don't remember exactly what was said, but it was something along the lines of like, um, she was okay with the fact that I wanted the separation. Right. And then I remember asking him, I was like, wait a minute, when you were in North Carolina, you told me that you tried to fix it with her and she was the one who said that she didn't want to fix it. Okay. And he's like, no, I just, and then he goes, no, I just told her that I still wanted, you know, to continue with the separation. And I'm just thinking in my head, like, he lied to me, God, he fucking lied to me. He lied so much. It's, it's, okay. It's, so that just struck you as another lie? Yeah, so that one I don't, well, it, it, yeah, well, and then now I'm seeing the news where he's telling everybody that he separated from her on, that he said he was, he told her he wanted a separation on the Monday that she went missing. And I'm just thinking in my head, like, he told me that he had already had that conversation with her before I was in the, even in his life. Well, and so not to cause you any more stress, but so when you're talking to him on Monday, this is Monday, right? This isn't Sunday. This is Monday. No, this is Monday. So this is after the event. This is after the murders. Yes. He, yes. he is telling you that he, she mentioned uh, that it was oh, he, she was okay with the separation. Although you know yes. now that um, that wasn't accurate. With those, that was something different than he had previously told you. And certainly she couldn't have been really saying anything, unfortunately. So... I mean, he's making he's making up stories after his wife is deceased. You, is that a fair yeah, statement? Well, is that I'm I'm kind of trying to follow where you're going. I I don't honestly. I, it just struck me as odd because I don't know if he was talking about the conversation they had had that day or okay. if he was talking about North Carolina. But either way, it just struck you it as was weird. A lie. It, it it struck me weird because he said that he was the one that was like pushing for it now and I was just thinking in the back of my head like he he made it sound like when I first got into his life that he was the one who had brought up the separation but that she was like super gung-ho about it like he made it sound like she was all on board with it and then when they were in North Carolina he's the one who said that he tried to fix it and she was, didn't want anything to do with it so it was weird to me when he was saying that he was the one that initiated the separation because I'm like wait a minute like and I think he, it was weird to me because I think he was referring to to either whatever happened on Monday morning or he was referring to whatever happened in North Carolina. And I was just really confused because I was like, well, at that point, I thought she was the one pushing you away, like not you pushing her. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Um, so I don't, I don't, it's just a lie. Yep. I mean, honestly, I don't know if it has any significance, but it's just, it was just a lie that I caught him. And I don't, I mean, I think everything he told me was a lie, but it was like a lie on top of it's a lie that contradicted the previous lies that he had told me. I understand. What's next on so, your list? Uh, um, okay, so then in that same exact conversation, two more things happened. Okay. One, um, I was asking him about his daughter's EpiPen because I know that CC has that tree nut allergy. Okay. And I was like, I was like, I, again, like, I don't remember, like, word for word, but it was something along the lines of, like, she didn't take your daughter's EpiPen, and he was like, no, and I was like, well, aren't you a little worried, because I was, like, trying to do my own reconnaissance, and I was like, aren't you worried about that, and he's like, he's like, well, we have, like, a stash of them in the basement or something like that, and he's like, she probably just took one of those, and I just thought it was weird, because several weeks earlier he had told me how expensive EpiPens were so I'm like if they're not expensive how do, how do you have a stash you don't have a stash nobody can afford a stash of EpiPens <laughs> right they're very expensive and, yeah so I almost was like 